Sophia is um, is a six year old child. She's my daughter, and uh, she has cerebral palsy. She was born um, with hydrocephalus. She had a she had a bleed during the last trimester, which caused her to have enlarged ventricles in the brain. And uh, we were aware of her cerebral palsy or her brain injury prior to birth. So uh, we started researching options for treatment before she was born. Her, her mother's a physical therapist, I'm an occupational therapist, and we, we have a pediatric practice, so that gave us a, a jump start on looking for interventions which would help her recover from this traumatic injury, this brain injury. We didn't know a whole lot about hyperbaric oxygen therapy at the time, but um, we got online like everyone else and began to read about it. And uh, we went to a couple a hard chamber clinics that were ran by hyperbaric physicians. And we tried a couple of those treatments to make sure that Sophia could tolerate those. Uh, our, Megan and I, looking at the research, we had to make a decision between do we want to buy the soft chamber or do we want to go and spend the money for the hard chamber dives. We did this so that we could just do unlimited treatments in the home. Atlanta is about an 80 mile drive for us. And just with the driving, the expense per session of the hard chamber, we decided to do the soft chamber. When we talk about hyperbaric oxygen and uh, neurological injuries, and when I say neurological injuries, I'm talking about cerebral palsy, I'm talking about stroke, I'm talking about traumatic brain injury, and any other type of injury which can damage the nervous system or the brain. There's research going both ways. Research generally is moving in the direction of supporting the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy for people who, who have injured their brain in any way. So if it, whether it's a stroke or a brain injury that occurred at birth, and even autism. Autism is a new area where we're seeing practitioners and families using both the soft chamber and the hard chamber. As you can imagine, when we first started, when Sophia and I first started using this chamber, it was, it was scary and uh, she cried. It took us about 20 sessions before she really got comfortable getting in here. But initially she was afraid. This is an enclosed environment and uh, I just had to be really supportive. We offered her rewards to get in. We allowed her to chew chewing gum initially so that, she could, so that it would clear her, her ears. And after about 15 or 20 sessions, this became something uh, that she really looked forward to and we started uh, reading books and um, having chewing gum and sometimes we would even take in a, a snack inside the chamber or even a sippy cup. We took a sippy cup in and would allow her to sip on the sippy cup as she was going, as we were pressurizing the chamber. Sophia's mother and I really feel that this hyperbaric chamber has been a crucial part of her re rehabilitation program. Um, her program is intense and it involves a lot of different therapies. We do suit therapy, we do a lot of nutritional interventions. We have a completely organic diet. We do a few nutritional supplements. And we do a really intense sensory diet. But uh, this, was, this was definitely core um, to, for, for her recovery. She's had a spectacular re recovery that medical science can understand. And you know, uh, did the 600 hyperbaric oxygen treatments do it? I mean, we did a lot of other therapies besides this. A lot of nutritional interventions from around the world. And so we can't prove that, but all I know is that her mother and I would not want to, if we had to go back, the only thing that we would do different is start the treatments earlier.